the purpose of this video is to introduce users to the uh, UAV RT post processing system. So, um, if you're watching this video, you may have come to our website um, uh, for the unmanned area vehicle radio telemetry system. Um, and in doing so, uh, may be interested in how the system post-processes uh, the data from uh, a flight uh, in terms of doing localization and, and uh, uh, VHF tag detection. Um, so if you've done this, you may have come to the documentation and looked over um, and stumbled upon our uh, GitHub site uh, and repository um, where we've got some post-processing code uh, provided. Um, if you've gotten that far, you may have downloaded this code. Um, and what I'm going to do is talk about this post-processing, uh, uh, these post-processing scripts um, in MATLAB um, and explain how, they how they're used and how and uh, the resulting uh, output files from uh, this post-processing. Um, so you can come in here and you can download this. Um, I've already got this system on my uh, computer, so I'm not going to go and do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got this clone of uh, the repository right here. <clears throat> and within this file, um, there are a number of M functions that are uh, written to do this post-processing. The main one you were interested in is UAVRT uh, underscore main. Um, that's uh, the main function we're going to use to post-process uh, our flight and data records. Um, the other thing, the other files in here, there's a KML files. Um, this has got some uh, KML icons and stuff in it that you won't uh, need to worry about. Um, there's output files function. So this is where this function uh, UAVRT main is going to uh, drop the resulting output files. Um, and then there's example data. This is uh, this data is on the uh, repository. <coughs> um, there are uh, two files in there for doing uh, that you can uh, try running the script on. Um, you may, in fact, uh, in your own file, want to put in a test data folder where you drop in your own test data. So I've done that. I've got some ex other examples that I'm going to run through in this video. Um, so at this point, uh, once you've downloaded all of these all these functions, um, what you need to do is you'd come in over into MATLAB um, and navigate into this folder so that your are, your directory is uh, the folder where, that has UAVRT main and all these subfolders. Um, so once I do this, um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, we'll start off with this example data that would be on the uh, on our uh, repository. Um, we've got flight data in here. There are two files. One is flight data, and it's got um, this looks um, the, is going to be what the system outputs for flight data. It's got time and kind of vehicle position um, at 10 hertz, um, along with a bunch of other vehicle information. Um, and then there's the IQ data file from the SDR, the software defined radio. So those are the two files we're going to need to access. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we are going to type UAVRT underscore main and press enter. So uh, what this is going to do is it's going to launch a window. It's going to ask us to select our flight data record. So I'm going to come into my example file, select the flight data record. I'm going to double click on that. Then it's going to ask me to find my uh, SDR, the, uh, the radio data file, and uh, it's going to be looking for a .dat file. So I'm going to select that. Um, now it's going to ask me for a number of processing inputs. So um, this is this first one is just uh, the uh, the string that is going to be on the front of all of our output files. Um, and so this is useful if you want to kind of make sure you can keep track of what these look like. It's going to default to the, the flight data file name. Uh, this was a line flight that we did. It had a series of waypoints along a line and the vehicle was flying at 61 meters. So I'm going to leave that there. I'll take off the flight data thing. Um, it's also asking for radio data sampling rate at, in Hertz. So this is uh, the system is set up for 48,000. You can change that if you have changed your settings. Um, it's also going to ask for the pulse duration and the pulse repetition interval. So <clears throat> uh, your VHF tag may be different, um, but ours uh, produces uh, approximately 20 millisecond uh, pulses and the repetition interval is about 1.3 seconds. So we need to be uh, fairly close on that so the algorithm can try to find those, uh, those pulses within the data record. So we're going to click OK on that. The next thing it's going to do is ask us about uh, waypoint dwell time. So the software um, is capable of going through and looking at the flight data record and if the vehicle has done a flight where it has stopped at a series of waypoints and done spins, um, it's going to look for where the speeds are low and basically say, I think this is at a waypoint. Um, and um, if you know how long it was going to be at a waypoint, let's say you were doing a, um, you knew it was going to be spinning in place for 30 seconds, um, plus or minus a second or so, you could enter that manually. But I'm going to do this auto detection. And what this is going to do is it's going to try to find all those points, um, those waypoints. 
um, when the vehicle speed was slow and then say look at the, kind of the average time and then give a little bit of buffer on either side and, and say that that was how long a waypoint was. Um, this is important because sometimes the vehicle you may take off and hold at a certain position um, for a couple of seconds uh, but it might be much less time than you would spend at a given waypoint or much more time depending on kind of uh, what was happening during takeoff or landing and so um, you may not want to include that in your localization. So um, this auto detect does a pretty good job of kind of getting rid of those launch and uh, landing uh, points. But um, if it if you run through it and it has identified your uh, kind of landing sequence as a as a waypoint, you can enter that manually. But I'm just going to click auto detect. So now we're going to get a little weight bar. Uh, it's going to tell us it's processing radio data. It's then going to go through and do some filtering of the radio data. Um, <clears throat> And um, so we'll, we got to wait a little bit. Um, this was, a, I think, an 18-minute flight or something like that. So this is going to on a longer end. Uh, it's now doing the localization. It's writing the KML output, and it will also write a text file output that we'll look at in just a moment. So by default, this program will give us a um, a MATLAB figure window right here. Um, you can see here that we've got the zero zero position is where the vehicle launched from. So that's the vehicle's home position. Uh, you can see here I, we call X position uh, positive north, so this is kind of a northeast um, plot. Y position is uh, right here, um, and this is in meters uh, from the home position. And this was the vehicle track. Uh, the, the localization results are here. These little blue dots, they're kind of all on top of each other because we've got multiple algorithms that are running, um, and they've all pretty much picked the same point for where it thinks the, the signal source was coming from. Um, in addition, we see the vehicle flight track and this light blue line. Uh, the individual pulses are plotted as these orbs, these circles, um, and their color and diameter are proportional to the amplitude of the, the relative amplitude of those pulses. Um, and so you can see we had the largest, strongest signal um, from this center waypoint right here. Each of these waypoints also, uh, because the vehicle during this flight was, uh, would fly to each one of these waypoints and spun around in place, um, we were able to get uh, direction of arrival uh, estimates. You can see they're all kind of pointing down in this direction. Those bearing estimates are then used to calculate um, this uh, and estimate the position of the origin. All right. Um, so that there's that output. This is actually a three-dimensional plot, which um, is sometimes useful. You can kind of come in here. You can see there's kind of a shadow of these bearings down here. We've got the waypoints plotted down below. We've got the vehicle track and all of the positions. So um, that may be useful. Um, but let's go back and look at. I'm going to close this window out now, um, and let's go and look at the output files. So we'll come back here. We'll look at the output files, and there's two output files that come from this. There's the summary file and the map file. So the summary file is simply a text file, and it's going to tell us that um, we were the, the, the system was able to find 645 pulses, um, where that was spectrally found. Um, it, ex, you know, you may, it, it says you know, there was an 18-minute flight. Given that pulse repetition interval we entered, you would expect this many pulses, uh, 868. We detected 645, but you don't expect to detect every single one. And so if there was a wide discrepancy, like let's say there was only 10 pulses found, um, and you maybe expected 800, you would, you would say, well, maybe it wasn't a doing a good job of actually detecting those pulses. So that gives you some indication. Um, it found six waypoints. It's also going to give you the strongest, uh, the location of the strongest waypoint. Or, I'm sorry, the strongest pulse. So this was where it detected the largest pulse. Um, for other types of flights where you might be flying a series of transects and maybe not using a directional antenna or using an omnidirectional antenna and you're just looking to see whether or not you've flown over the tag, um, this might give you an indication about when you flew over that, um, uh, that tag where the, you know, the signal was the strongest. Um, we have our localization results right here. So it's got four different methods, the CM method, the uh, maximum likelihood estimator, RMR and M estimation methods. Um, and then it gives us the median of all of those as well. Um, it's giving us a bit distance from the home location and a bearing um, to where it thinks the source of that uh, signal was coming from. It gives us the latitude and longitude and the X and Y positions as well. The output file also contains waypoint data. So we have uh, the six waypoints that were generated or that were detected. Um, it gives us the estimated uh, direction of arrival of the um, of the radio uh, signals um, if this was a vehicle, uh, a, a flight where the vehicle spun in place. It also gives us the kind of the waypoint received signal strength indication. So this is kind of normalized power, the average power at each of these waypoints. And you can see 
Um, this one has the highest um, weighting, uh, uh, waypoint number four, which we saw earlier on that plot. Um, and, and this kind of helps you because it can say, well, I, I kind of trust this bearing at this waypoint more than maybe this one because it was a much lower signal, received signal power. Um, it gives us the waypoint of the individual, uh, of the, each of these way, uh, or gives us the, I'm sorry, the latitude and longitude of each of these waypoints, uh, the X and Y position, the average altitude, and then the time when it started at that waypoint and the time when it left that waypoint. Now, finally, in this uh, summary log, there is also a list of each of the pulses that were detected, when they were detected, uh, the power in milliwatts, um, and the location um, where that pulse was detected. And so, while this isn't generally going to be um, important or necessary, uh, it might be useful later for doing some additional post-processing if you're interested in doing that. So let's go ahead and close out the summary file. Oh, I'll say also there, it also tells you which files uh, it analyzed here. So that may be useful if you uh, forgot to name this thing. Um, give it a good name that uh, correlated well with uh, the data that went into it. Um, now let's also look at the mapping output. So this uh, function is also going to generate a KML output. So this is a, um, a function that or a, uh, an output file that we can read into uh, Google Earth or some additional or a, a different type of mapping software if you'd rather. Um, and it's going to contain a lot of the same data, the same kind of graphical information that was available in the MATLAB function. Um, but it, it's nice because it provides it in this in this mapping software. And we can do a lot of other things once we're into this uh, Google Earth. So um, let's come down here um, and look at what uh, was provided. So this jumps right into our temporary places. So we can see here um, that the the flight path here is um, is plotted, and we can go through and we, you know we can go through and, and and turn off any of these that we want. So I can turn off the flight plan or the flight path of the vehicle. Um, we've got folders that are uh, kind of collect different uh, groups of data that we may want to turn on and off. So we've got location estimates, waypoints, bearings, and received pulses. So. Um, the, the the waypoints, um, actually, let's go ahead and turn off the received pulses. Uh, once again, just like in MATLAB, these received pulses are shown as these kind of orbs that are um, that are plotted with a color and diameter proportional to the amplitude of the received pulse. So we can turn this off um, and get a little bit of a cleaner output. So you can see here we've got the waypoints. The waypoints and the bearing lines are all plotted on the ground because it makes it a little bit easier to visualize kind of where they're converging um, rather than plotting them up at the actual altitude the vehicle flew at. Um, and we can see our location estimates here. We've got our different algorithms uh, methods here, the CM method, MLE, RMR, M estimation, and the median of all of them. So we can turn that on and off if we want to. Um, in this flight, actually, the tag was kind of like right over here. This this was actually quite good estimates that uh, were produced by the system. Um, we can turn our waypoints on and off. We have waypoints uh, one through six that were identified. Um, so we can turn those on and off if we want to. Um, and then once again, we've got this received uh, these received waypoints. So once we're in uh, in Google Earth, what's really great about this is that um, if we wanted to. Um, you know, we, we can kind of see the vegetation and uh, where we were. We can see in three-dimensional space where the vehicle actually flew to, um, where the signals were the largest or kind of strongest. And you could imagine if you were flying a transect, for example, a series of transects, these, these um, pulse indications would give you an idea about if you flew right over the tag, for example, um, you may want to say, well, I think the tag may be there, and then fly and maybe do a localization of flight around that area. Um, if you're just doing signal detection. Um, the other thing that's uh, nice about this is that we may not, um, now you may not actually be in a location where you've got internet access, for example. You can cache some local areas um, if you've opened up Google Earth ahead of time. Um, if, for example, though, um, you didn't have a network connection and you didn't have this data cached, um, you you may actually have a topographical map. So if you're, if you're going to be going to an area where you know you're not going to have a network connection, um, you can download maps ahead of time. So if we come over to um, uh, Google real quick, um, you can get maps at uh, Topo Viewer, uh, the USGS uh, topographical viewer. So I'll click on that, um, and we can come in here and click on Get Maps, and it's gonna. You can. There's a little video you can watch if you want to. Um, but what we can do is we can come in here, and uh, for this flight, I knew I was going to be at Mormon Lake. Uh, south of Flagstaff, so I'm going to zoom in on this. Um, there's a whole different bunch of sizes. I'm not going to go through a tutorial on this, but um, I'm going to look at all of these different uh, topographical maps here that are available. 
Um, and I can come in and okay, say, well, I want, I knew I was flying in this area. You know, you, there's no reason you couldn't download a whole series of these if you're flying in an area. I'm going to download the KMZ file right here. There's there's geo reference TIFFs and PDFs as well available. Um, MATLAB can, I'm sorry, uh, Google Earth could read in this uh, these files as well. Uh, but this KMZ file is a much smaller file um, and has a lot of the same information. So we're going to go ahead and download that. Um, um, this download um, is going to show up as a zip file, um, and in fact, if I go to my downloads folder, let's go to that. Um, let's see, we've got this. You can see I just downloaded this a little while ago. Um, um, so let's go ahead and unzip this file and just double click on this. The output of this should just be this KMZ file. So I can um, double click on this and this is going to launch me into uh, back into Google Earth because that's my default KMZ file uh, interpreter. And you can see we get the USGS topographical map plotted right on top of this. So um, if you didn't have network access, um, you could at least see this plotted in the context of this map. Um, and you can you know, see roads, you can see streams, um, etc. So once, we're, once we've got this, um, you can, you know, we can turn this map on and off if we want to. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn this off. It's actually, I think, a little bit easier to see this in, um, with these aerial photos. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, let's see. Uh, so I'll turn that off. We'll reset this. I'm going to turn this flight off. And what I want to do is I'm going to come in and um, process another set of data. So we come back in here in a MATLAB. I'm going to run UAVRT main again. And um, we will, I'm going to run a couple of other files. So I'm going to come in some test data and um, let's, I'll run a, a set where we didn't run a waypoint. So this is a, an example file where, um, where the vehicle didn't actually fly to waypoints. It just flew along a transect. Um, and it was actually a set of range tests that we were doing. So I'm going to call this no waypoint. It was flying at 122 uh, meters. We're going to do auto detection again. And we're going to process this and we can look at the outputs. Okay, so you can see here, um, I'll move to scoot this over. Uh, we got a warning that no waypoints were detecting. So it's not going to do any localization or DOA estimations if it didn't actually get a uh, flood to a, a waypoint, if it never really stopped. So we get the same kind of graphical output here in the MATLAB figure window. Um, but let's look at the summary files, close our downloads. Um, we have our now no waypoint summary file. You can see here that there is no localization results um, or DOA estimates. We basically just get the pulse, pulsed, uh, pulse list and then um, this summary file as including the, the strongest waypoint list. Okay. So I'm going to close that down. We can look at the KM, KML file as well. Um, and you can see here that uh, what this result looked like. So um, you can see here pulses were kind of the strongest. The strongest received signals happened um, along this transect um, from the base station. You can see the vehicle kind of flew up here, flew along here, flew to this waypoint. The tag actually, this flight, the actual the vehicle flew right over the tag. And you can see we, the signal strength actually dropped right off when it was directly over the tag, which was localized right around here. Um, and that's because we flew right under the antenna and there's a null in the antenna at that point. So we would expect that signal strength to drop off. And then it flew kind of radially away um, from the tag. And you see these pulse power drops off as the vehicle flies away. Um, there were actually other pulses detected here, but they are so much smaller than the amplitudes here. This is plotted as raw amplitude, um, not in dB, and so um, it, it doesn't, they don't actually show up here, uh, given the way that we normalize these. Um, so you can see here that um, you know, if you were flying a series of these transects, this kind of information might be helpful for you to say, okay, well, I think the tag is somewhere around this area, um, and then you could potentially do a uh, localization flight that was a little bit closer into where the, you were getting high signal strength. Um, so we can, let me turn this one off again. I'll show you one other uh, flight. We'll run uh, UAVRT main again. And I am going to come in here to my test data and I'm going to do one where we just flew to one waypoint. So this was a flight where we weren't flying a transect. We just kind of, it was a pop-up flight where you might get, uh, maybe just you want to get a single bearing estimate. Um, so I'll select this. Uh, once again, we'll call this, I'll delete this flight data. 
and we'll just call this one waypoint, and this is going to run very quickly because it was a much uh, shorter data set. It was only one, one flight, or one, one waypoint. So you can see I'd identified a single waypoint. We did get a bearing estimate. This looks kind of weird because we've got this erratic, but this was actually the track of the vehicle. Uh, but because we're so zoomed in, because we're only looking at one waypoint, we can actually see its motion. You can see, warning, only one waypoint detection, so it's skipping localization. So um, it did do a bearing estimate for this single waypoint, but it's not doing a localization because it was only one waypoint. Um, so we come here, we're going to see that represented in our summary file. You can see here there's no localization outputs, but we do, do get a direction of arrival estimate at uh, negative 91 degrees um, from north, um, and we still get our pulse data list, which is much shorter in this case. All right. So we'll go ahead and close that. Um, we'll look at the KML output. You can see here, once again, we get a bearing estimate. This is, it draws a 100 meter uh, bearing estimate. Um, this flight, I think the tag was actually located over here somewhere. Um, and so this was a flight where the vehicle flew up and it spun in place, but only at a single waypoint. And you can see we've got, um, you know, the highest detected pulses obviously are all in one position and we only have one waypoint uh, plotted there. So um, once you have this, if you did a series of uh, flights, for example, you know, there's no reason you can't, uh, we'll turn that map off, um, you can't plot all of this stuff together as a single uh, data set. Uh, once you've got this all inputted into um, uh, into Google Earth, um, so that's uh, that's about it um, in terms of the uh, the current version of the software um, and its uh, output capacity.